So it really comes down to, again, why do you need sport? And so I shared the fact, the story of why I needed sport. And that's kind of how it goes. And then if athletes want a little bit more detailed one-to-one, -one, then the families call me and I tell them from the beginning, my expectation is not to get you recruited. My expectation is to help you find, which I have this triangle effect with balance in the middle of academics, athletics, and social. And my job is there is a school for everybody. But A, you want to know why you want to do this, and then we're going to help you figure out how that goes. So and I failed in the beginning, trust me. <laughs> what is valuable for the athlete to consider? You know, what are, where are the kind of the, the pitfalls that an athlete can fall into in that process that can lead them to making the wrong decision for where they're going? And, and what is the responsibility that they have to, to ensure they're going to the right place and picking the right place? That's a really good question. I think one of the things that I, there was a, there was a lot of um, heaviness, but a, a, a story that happened at Penn my second year where there was a track runner who unfortunately, um, was not right emotionally, mentally, and jumped off a rooftop and committed suicide. And that changed the effect in a lot of things, and she was only a freshman. And she then, there was a book written about her, What Made Maddie Run. And the, the gal who wrote the story did a great job. And she wrote in the book at some point that you want to be challenged, but you don't want to be consumed. And I thought that was super effective. Okay. And I have used that religiously, not only in my presentation, but to the athlete. And so I said, listen, I am, I've taken my time at Penn of how to, to get to know the athletes. I learned a lot from my husband. Mike is an amazing uh, person when it comes to getting to know an athlete and finding that relationship. And so I took a little bit of that and how to get to know them. And we had this great introduction. And I also try to tell them, like, listen, when I would at, talk to athletes at Penn who were looking at Penn, I would say, I'm a person who loves a challenge. The greater the challenge, I'm more drawn to. That's just the demented person I am. However, I also know my limits, that I don't want to find somewhere that I'm going to find myself in the rabbit hole and get consumed and don't know how to find my way out. So where am I going with this? It's truth. I tell them, you have to find your truth. And it is hard when you're 14 to 18 years old. Even when you're older, you have to know your truth. Yeah. So there's that not getting consumed, knowing the challenge, finding your own truth, staying in your lane. And I think once those barriers kind of come down, the athlete and I develop a working relationship. And it's based on trust. I'm not their coach. I'm not their parent. I'm not going to BS them. The more they're honest with me, the more I can help them. And I'm not here to judge you. Like, I want to know all your strengths. I want to know your weaknesses. And some of these athletes, to their hand, have done a great job in our intros of just being real with me. And yeah. that has really been great. And 75 athletes will have graduated from P3 come June this year. And as of right now, 50 who graduated from the program, 33 are still rowing all over the country, all different levels. And talk about kind of those, those, those pressures and those influence that the athletes are creating, how you help them mitigate those and how they can mitigate them themselves. You know, and specifically parental influence, mm -hmm. you know, social influence, you know, maybe just branding of the school. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly, you know, the big name Ivy Leagues have a big brand name yeah. and they're, they're the right school for a very small amount of yeah. people. Um, and certainly a very small percentage of the people who think they'll be the right yeah. school. And so how do you initiate that conversation? How do you kind of get 17-year-olds oh. to kind of have the maturity to kind of, you know, That's, um, that realization? I think that some of the athletes uh, actually are pretty level-headed from the beginning. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things how the program works is I always, I used to have a write-up with the parents after my follow-up with my meeting with the athlete, but now I have a verbal conversation on the phone with the families. And I think the dialogue, going back to the original basic of communication, has really helped. And so what I've realized is I'm not telling the parents, I'm educating the parents. The mm. parents actually really don't understand. Yeah. And they, they want to know, so it's tough love. I'm very honest with them. 
this is what you need. This, you need to hold your line. It's not about the better school. It's about the right fit. Yeah. Some parents are like, yes, I realize that. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. Um, I, too, myself as an educator, have to remember my, remember not to get monkeyed up because I'm so passionate of what I believe in. And I get so crazed in my head that I have to take a deep breath and remind that they really don't understand. And so in order to get them, it is a, it's a constant conversation. It's a list of schools. Um, they do research. They do their homework. We talk about it. Um, we break it down, we talk about what a visit is, we talk about how an unofficial or an official does actually work, but that's so far down the line. In the end, it's like, why do you, you are going to school to get an education, and then you need sport, and how does that sport filter into the education that you're going to receive? And I think the, there, there are, the parents are definitely, everybody comes together, and it becomes, the communication gap comes, excuse me, <clears throat> it comes with the conversation I have with the athlete, then with the parents, and making sure that they're communicating, because sometimes they don't. Yeah. And how do all three of us in this triangle, again, work as a unit? Um, and I also highly recommend I incorporate or I intertwine with their high school counselors. I teach the athletes mostly this is about awareness. I'm teaching these athletes um, who are very intelligent, but definitely are afraid to communicate have a hard time writing a simple email. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I really help them understand. And once they talk it through, they write it out, and we go over it you know, during our meetings, it's amazing. What I can say is the moment I pick up a new athlete, some I will have worked with 14 months, some I will work to six months. Um, but the, for, from the moment I meet them, so the time they graduate, it's a lifelong relationship. And they know that just because our process has ended doesn't mean that we have ended. Like they can reach out to me and I've definitely stayed in contact with a lot of them. And the other part is, it is about connecting. So when I started, I used the athletes who I knew were in college or had graduated from the schools and they connected with the P3 clients. Mm -hmm. And now it's coming full circle. What did you learn? What did you learn by working with Cassandra? What did you learn from P3? And why is the school working for you right now? So that's what this is all about. It really is about the connections. And how do you help them you know, on the rowing side decide what fit is better between a D1, D2, D3? Oh, uh, that's a good question too. Um, I've learned, it's funny, I've, and again, it could be totally off kilter, but I think what I've really started to learn is I try to keep it simple. I say the division one, two, and three is not about, you know, what program is harder or greater. It's definitely about the size of the institution. And actually, I tell them the D3 is, in my eyes, and D2 are the hardest because they don't have a lot of spots. The academics are very tough, and honestly, the you have to be a really disciplined, independent athlete because there's there's a shorter time with your program. So if you are kind of a, a couch potato and need the push of a, a coach, D1 can be. But I think the athletes get confused because they only think D1 of these higher end schools when in fact there's so many Division One schools that can cater or cater to their talent. So the division one or division three? Division school? one. Okay. Division one. Yeah. Um, I think I mean division three and division two are doing a great job right now. Well I think I mean when people think about division one, they're thinking about you know the Ohio States, the Virginias, mm -hmm. you know, the Yales. They're not realizing just that huge spectrum because Division two and Division three schools definitely overlap well into the lower tiers of Division one schools. Oh, a hundred percent. So you know, I think if athletes are just fixated on as a D one, D two, D three, they're you know, unless and, you know, if you're a girl pulling a seven five two k, then you know, that'll narrow down your options, you know, in terms, or at least well, not narrow down to give you more. But it's not. But if you're an athlete, certainly you know on the slower end, you know you don't have to say that I have to be going to D1 to get this experience, or I, you know D3, 
I can't go to D1 because I'm not pulling a 710, you know, that there's, there's such a... And I a, think that's where the, range, the, the, the range is. I, I think there's a different range from an athlete that's looking at Cal to an athlete that's looking at Jacksonville to mm -hmm. an athlete that's looking at Virginia, yeah. West Virginia, uh, Drake, Duke. They're all different. So I try to tell them, like, it really depends. Again, that's why I say pick the institution, look at the institution, mm -hmm. and then when you compare it to who you are athletically, okay, so you may not get supported. And I try to use that instead of recruited. And then they say, what's supported? Well, supported of your application. And you may have to get it on your own. Well, if you do, then you still communicate with the coach. Talk to me about the welcome program coach. I had two athletes who came here this past summer to our fitness program who got into their respective institutions and were going to go walk on. And they trained all summer, they walked on, made the team. Not touching an oar all summer, just basic one-on-one -on -one fitness. That was the confidence breaker. Yeah. So I think those are the things that they just have to remind themselves of. It's, you know, why do you want to be an athlete? And, you, it, and then what is that right fit for you? There's so many amazing schools out there, but they're all very different. So I educate them there, like what is the difference? And in our meetings, we always talk about, first of all, how's school going? I always ask them that. How are you doing? How is practice? We talk about that. We talk about their assessments, that they've had 6Ks or 2Ks or running and they break those down and we go over that a little bit. We talk about racing um, and then we get into the schools and we start to talk about that. And I always ask them after every meeting, you know, what are you learning? What's making sense? And it's great, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, there's been some tough conversations with parents. Some parents definitely don't wanna hear that Temple University is the right fit for their daughter when they should be looking at Penn, when in fact Temple was the right institution for their daughter and they are striving and killing it and doing amazing. So you, you know, there's only so much you can do sometimes. Right. But I would say the percentage is a lot higher of understanding how this process works. And then where does the, the coaching of those institutions play in? Because for me, I you know, I always encourage my athletes to really get to know the coaches and to make sure that, that was the right fit as well. And so, you know, but the challenge of that is coaches move on. Move on. Yeah. So that's so a very, kind of, yes, they do. How does it play into kind of So when we get to the point of their, they've done their homework, some might have seen the schools mm -hmm. and we have a pretty good sense, then they reach out and they start to, I say, you are learning how to reach out and have communication in order to create dialogue. Once the dialogue has created, meaning that they've had a phone conversation, then you are now continuing to develop and build a relationship. And it's not always on the coach. Like you have to, it's not, Travis, you email me and I'm gonna email you back and now I'm just waiting for you to email me. No, yeah. you can continue. You are one of 300 athletes of these, more than that, that these coaches are I looking at. I think that's at. extraordinarily important for the athletes to understand because I, I get that all the time. It's like I need email them and I haven't heard back. Yeah. You know, and because when you're seventeen you don't understand you just don't have the volume oh, of responsibility exactly. and commitments where you have hundreds or even dozens of people trying to connect with you in a meaningful way at the same time. And so if athletes can really appreciate that, because for them, if someone doesn't answer their sure. text, they're ignoring them or there's something yeah. wrong, you know, and, and they translate that to, if I don't hear back right away yeah. from this college coach, um, then they don't, they're not interested they in watching me. Just keep, and just, keep yeah, them just up to date, keep, keep, on, keep yeah. them up to date. And then soon enough, what I always say is, there, and I learned this from uh, Coach Liz Tron, was it's a piece of information. Mm -hmm. It's a simple piece of information. They, they are gaining that knowledge of, okay, put it in the database. They don't want to communicate with me. That's a piece of information. But they definitely, so I, I encourage them to keep reaching out. So we always go over every conversation. We always go over every email, where they are, how they break it down, and soon enough, but from the, from the beginning, I definitely don't encourage about the coaches. I, I, you don't know what's gonna happen. And then as we go through, they definitely understand how that development, because the coach, what I've realized, has responded greater to the athlete because they've done their homework. They researched the school. They might have taken a visit. They know what they want. They know, and the, any good college coach wants an athlete that actually wants to go to that institution. And if they're a quality athlete, and quality can be on all different levels, and they know it's the right fit, then it's gonna work, it's magic. 
And I think I would tell my athletes this all the time that they would ask about selection and you know, I would give what they would perceive as a flippant response to what was the most honest I could was that, you know, I'm selecting you every day, you know, yeah. everything that you're doing, yeah. you know, and it's the nuance and, and kind of how you're making decisions, how you're conducting yourself mm -hmm. that's going to be important and something as simple as, you know, are you, do you give up after one email, you know, and, and kind of pushing this, you know, how important is this, are you persistent, mm -hmm. and you can be respectfully persistent, you know, I, I understand you have a lot of athletes <laughs> contacting you, I just want to make sure that you understand how mm -hmm. interested I am, instead of, hey, I'm emailing again, I didn't hear from you, yeah, you know, let exactly. me know what you think. That's exactly you know? what and we so, talked about. Uh, yep. And yeah, for me, it was, you know, how do you conduct yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and how do you communicate, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on. If you do have to mispractice, how do you, how do you communicate that yeah. need? Are you like, hey, I'm, I'm really sorry this came up, I tried as best I could to so yeah. plan yeah. around it, or is it just like, you know, hey, I can't come, you yeah. know, um, is those, those little things communicate a lot, and I think that athletes just got to realize that they've got to be genuine, you know, and, uh, you know, you were talking about just kind of the emails to the school, kind of one little rule I would kind of, you know, throw out there is that it's very easy, and, I, and I've done it plenty of times as a coach of, of cut and paste a, a Oh, email, yeah. Being and then, careful. And, then request the names. <laughs> and I'm not going in the, in the sense of, you know, don't send the, you know, I'm really interested in Cornell well, it's to been, Columbia, it's, yeah. but I'm talking more in the sense of you need to ask yourself if your interest in that school isn't enough to justify writing a template in email from scratch, then maybe it's not worth pursuing that school. Yeah. You know, and, and just being able to say, okay, well, I know I'm going to be asking the same things, but I'm going to write this completely fresh. I'm going to take it from why I'm interested in Columbia as well as Cornell, but yeah. this is focusing on the here. template. The template is good to a certain degree, and mm -hmm. we talk, and I talk about that, and I talk it in my presentation as well, the individuals. Yeah. Again, the intro of who you are, what you've done, where you are, like you wanted all the stats. And then I said in that middle paragraph is now you put in the homework that you've done. Yeah. Why do you like the school? Why are you interested in it? What do you want to continue to learn? And then following up with, I look forward to hearing back. You know, uh, let me know when we can have a call and thank you for your time. And that's it. I said it's very short. So you can't have that cut and paste but you have to have that very specific, personal, in the middle of why you're reaching out to the school to learn something. Definitely. And um, you know, on that sense, we've been talking about email communication. What, what are kind of the ideal communication mediums for those athletes and how does that evolve with the time? You know, is it email, email and immediately as soon as you can make phone calls, make phone calls? You know, should they yeah, so that's a good question too. So basically I kind of, break them down into columns. So you have a group of 25 like schools and we're in five schools per column. Recently, I've started to work backwards. And 25 seems like a lot, is that just a big Oh yeah, no, that's perfect. Time, yeah, because yeah. then they'll start to narrow off. I okay. mean, they'll cut off, but they want to learn something. You'd yeah. be amazed that schools in the D column have ended up in the A column mm -hmm. because they, first of all, base it off of their research and maybe visiting and then all of a sudden they get to learn a little bit more and they're like oh maybe that isn't the right fit for me so it is a, it, again it's this work in progress but i do it in segments for them and i give them a clock of when to reach out because too much is too much if you throw out 50 emails at once you're going to get maybe set up these calls and you don't know what to do so i break them down by weeks and then they learn how to micromanage and continue to follow up and set up another call and learn some more and they just keep track of everything as they kind of roll so i kind of tear it off and do an interval style and then they kind of break off and it seems like the pattern and the flow goes a lot more smooth for them and it's not as overwhelming and let's talk a little bit about the role of the parents and the coaches in that process you know the do's and do nots you know starting on the parent side and we can kind of go into the okay. coaching side that's a very good question too. The parents um, that I work with in, in my presentation that I educate, definitely the do nots is do not interfere with them corresponding with the coach. Do not, first of all, write an email for them on their behalf. Uh, do not set a phone call. Let them drive the bus. The athletes drive the bus. The do's 100% the coaches, the collegiate coaches are doing actually a really nice job now where they are inter they are more 
taking the time to set up uh, FaceTime, Skype, or conference calls with parents earlier rather than later. And so I definitely encourage that any parent that has a question about the process, and this is when the athlete is already in good communication, in good correspondence with the coach, to say, hey, listen, is it okay that we set up a phone call and my parents chime in and we have a conference call? They definitely have some questions and I think it would be better to hear from you rather than me and that would help out. So I think those are some really good things for parents to have those conference calls, uh, which definitely really help. Yeah. So yeah, go, going back to what you said in terms of you know things that you communicate to the coach in terms of how you how you uh, the decision that you're making, how you're communicating. If a parent is writing an email to a coach, that's going to communicate to that coach, right? The coach doesn't want to have an athlete coming in that relies on the parents to write emails for them, 100%. right? You as a college coach are going to want an athlete that has, you know, a faculty for themselves, yep. you know, and can and can, you know, take control because when they're at school, the parents aren't going to be getting into that's practice. Right. They're not going to, to be right. telling them to do their homework, and so you know, you as the you as the athlete are going to need to to put your foot down and say no. You know, and, and I get it, you know, the parents that are writing the emails, those are the parents that are going to put a lot of pressure on their, on their kids mm -hmm. to be like, I don't want you to write this email, I'm going to do it. And, and the, the kids and part of that maturity process is, be honest, you know, put your foot down respectfully mm -hmm. to your parents and saying, nope, I've got this one. 